G'day friends, my name is James of James Luke Burt Creative and welcome to another month of Art Snacks Box Freestyle where we take the supplies from the 2021 Art Snacks Plus Box for June, experiment with them to within an inch of their lives and then hopefully create a masterpiece for the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge. Today's fun fact is my shirt is foreshadowing what I create today, so let's get right to it. So here is the Art Snacks Plus box for June 2021. Here is everything inside. Let's unwrap the green burrito and see what we'll be playing with today. First up in the Plus box, we have the Strathmore 400 series Tone 10 Mixed Media Art Journal in size 8.5 by 5.5, and I got the toned gray version. In the Plus box, we also have the Itoya Profolio Midtown Pouch, four inches by seven inches, cute little travel pouch there. We have the Montana Bold Marker 8 millimeter, millimeter, millimeter round nib in black. We have two Derwent light, light fast colored pencils. Wow, I'm just getting super tongue tied today. I got strawberry and platinum. We have the Kudetake Zig Fure Gokochi fine tip brush pen. I received a blue version, as well as the Unibol Signo UM153 white gel pen, one of my favorite favorite of all time supplies. We have candy and a sticker. Let's move all of this to the side and get set up for some play. Alrighty, now my marker is primed, a little over primed if I'm honest. <laughs> Got a little carried away there, uh, just watching the barrel flood into that nib. I um, I started my experimentation. I tried to get rid of some of that excess ink by putting it into a paint palette and then reconstituted it with water since there was a lot of ink in there. I've known from experience in these experiments that water and alcohol-based markers just don't really mix to make anything. Like this um, this blue marker is making this kind of blue tint, the, br the brush pen, sorry. Um, but because there was a lot of ink in the, in the little well, the palette, I was able to get this mix that almost looked like liquid charcoal, like, you know, from a fire, like charcoal. Uh, it would look really weird on the paper and it actually smudged out like charcoal as well. So, I mean, is that something I'm going to use very often? Probably not, but I was fascinated to see that, you know, that marker could produce that texture, that result. It's not something you think of when you pick up that marker, you don't think of that result. And this, in essence, is a part of the fun of experimentation. Um, you know, a lot of the time I am just experimenting for experimenting's sake. I'm not expecting <laughs> to find the supplies to do something super crazy that you know, wasn't for their intended purpose. But I do expect that there'll be things to discover and find or, you know, things that might just be interesting enough to try in my Art Snacks challenge. Um, I, I really enjoy the challenge aspect of it and I do enjoy discovering these new applications uh, for me. They may not be new, in fact, I actually think everything in the world has been done before. <laughs> so let's not claim that anything is totally new. Even the ink dipped paint, uh, what was it, the pencil that we dipped in the acrylic ink? <laughs> Let's just assume everything's been done before. Uh, but it's also fun to be able to not only experiment with the supplies, but also how these supplies work on paper. And that was another point I wanted to bring up because um, if, if you followed me on any of my other like social media platforms, you'll know that I do have a, a, quite a large supply of art mediums to play with and different brands of supplies. And so it's not like I'm using these things for the first time. Uh, sometimes I've used these things before. I've definitely used these white gel pens before. I have a set of the Derwent Lightfast pencils. Um, what else? I think that's it from this box. Oh, in this journal, in fact, actually, I have a toned tan version of this journal, so not the gray. Um, but in all, for all intents and purposes, I have used a bunch of these supplies before. The difference is when you start restricting yourself to a certain color palette, or when you use the supplies in a, on a different paper. And this is uh, specifically for those of you that get the Art Snacks Plus box. Um, it is a really, really good idea to experiment with that substrate. And that's one of the benefits that I really enjoy about the Plus box is that there is a substrate to work with because we can get very, very familiar with certain brands of paper or certain paper textures and paper types and almost not know that 
our supplies would be completely different supplies on a different paper. <laughs> um, and it's not to scare you, I mean, I don't think most paper companies are gonna stop making their paper anytime soon, but you know, things change, formulas change, and it's always a good idea just to be open to the understanding that, you know, there are many factors that go into how your supplies are working. And so if you love your watercolor set or you love your brush pen, just experiment with all the different papers you have. You might actually find that, and I have found this in the past, uh, you may find that there is another paper out there that works better for you. Sketching in particular, I always used to think I love to sketch on really toothy paper like really textured paper until I started using a, it was a, a Midori cream paper to sketch on and it was so smooth and it was so, such an enjoyable experience to sketch on it <laughs> that my preference for drawing these really clean illustrations, you know, with, with graphite pencils was now to draw on really smooth cream tone paper. That I would never have known if I just kept drawing on the printer copy paper I used to draw on as a kid. So specifically for the plus box people, uh, really get your most out of the different substrates that are in the box and just, you know, try what's in the box, do your art snacks challenge, but also bring in some of your other favorite supplies, see what they do on there as well. Um, a toned paper. I actually thought, well, you know, I've got a tan version of this journal. I know how it works. Just using the gray as the mid-tone was completely different to using the brown as the mid-tone, seeing as I draw people a lot, the brown was a lot more complementary to the skin tones, the grey suddenly uh, did not blend as well <laughs> with the skin tones in this capacity. Um, so yeah, all of those things are super interesting to note and I hope you do find some time to experiment with your boxes when they come because it's a really good um, insightful part of the process I find. Okay, let's move on to the final piece for the hashtag Arts Next Challenge. <laughs> I'm doing a trio of fashion illustrations today and I wanted to pull them all together into a little cohesive set, so I set myself a little Cruella inspiration. We saw that movie recently, I was so taken away with all the fashions. I'm a big, like, villains fan in, in a lot of Disney films, I tend to root for the villains. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. Um, no, I just generally think they're a little bit more fabulous as a character. So I just loved it. I, I really enjoyed it, specifically the fashion. If you don't know this, a uh, long time ago, I swear in like six lifetimes ago, I thought I was gonna be a fashion designer. Um, mostly because I had a huge passion for, not only fashion, uh, but fashion illustration. I love the fantasy of drawing these wild characters with impossible proportions and the most outrageous looking fashions. Um, and the idea of, you know, haute couture, this wearable art, it was so fascinating to me, specifically women's. I was never, like, honestly, oddly enough, never really into men's fashion. <laughs> it being the fashion I probably would have worn, I, it never really concerned me that much. I just loved the fantasy of women's uh, high fashion. So that led to kind of a long period of me pursuing that in like later in high school and I uh, you know I kind of at one point was at a crossroads choosing between a career in dance or a career in fashion and I chose dance thinking well you know I can't dance forever but fashion is something I could always come back to plot twist, I lost the competitive edge for it. <laughs> Fashion is a very competitive industry and it moves very quickly. I don't think that's very suitable for my personality these days, but I still really have um, a great deal of respect for the craftsmanship of, uh, of a lot of the fashion that I enjoy and just the fantasy of it all. I think it's so outrageous, but I just love to look at it. So, uh, being inspired by Cruella, I ended up just choosing spots. I think I'm just, you know, I'm very, uh, <laughs> very abstract with my inspiration there. <laughs> the most obvious thing I could choose. Now I wanted to choose spots just to tie all of this together. I wanted to make sure each of them had at least spots show up there. That that was my nod to Cruella. But also, um, you know, I just thought I'd share a, f a few bits of information or what I thought about because, uh, you know, this used to be something I would think about and only recently have I realized it was never as difficult as I always thought it was. Uh, and that was the idea of building continuity into your pieces. Uh, a lot of the time, it's just, 
about repetition, but it's not repetition in the way you think it is. You don't really have to make every illustration look exactly like the one before it. There just has to be enough elements of of something repeated. So this kind of lends itself well to the Art Snacks challenge because if you keep repeating the process, uh, inevitably you're going to repeat the supplies that you use. And if I I did that, tell myself, I was like, well, I guess I'm just gonna use the same supplies, so maybe that might work out. I thought I'm gonna limit myself even more than that and give each supply an intention. So I told myself, okay, well, I want the eyes to be in that Montana bold marker, so they'll always be big, bold eyes, but I also want there to be a head wrap or a head scarf or some kind of head covering or hair in itself. I want that to be black as well. Uh, so no matter the fact that I did all the eyes like differently, or I did the hair or the head differently, um, there was continuity because I used the same big bold black lines to do that with. So that already builds in some continuity. I used a red pencil to sketch out all my images and all of them have red lips. Again, just a little part of repetition that shows up in each one, even though it might be different for each one. The blue wash that I made in my experimentation I thought that would be a nice shadow, since I could intensify some areas with the actual pen, but then I could use the liquid wash to make a nice lighter version of that shadow, or build it up in certain ways. So that repeated itself throughout each illustration, even though the shadows might have been in different places and at different, you know, at varying strengths, varying degrees of shadow. So. I guess the one thing I'm gonna I suggest is if you want to this month think of making a series of illustrations, you don't have to change up everything you do. In fact, my method here was I drew one that was kind of shoulders and above, and then I drew one that was you know more close up. It was like right just on the shoulder and the chin. Uh, so it was like a really close face shot. And then this one is just zoomed in. You don't even see the shoulders or the neck or anything. It's just half the face. So I kind of did the same image, but just zoomed in and changed a few things and then kept an intention for each of my supplies so that I knew that, well, wherever I put the shadows, they're gonna be in this blue wash. So it doesn't have to be the same image, but if you have this continuity with your supplies, you can also build continuity with other things too, like the spots. If you notice, each of the spots I did were different. There was the white spots from the first one that were all kind of scribbled and colored in. Then the second one had a smaller white dot around the head. This one here is gonna have one of those watercolory, like smudgy white circles in that uh, black space around the edge as well. So there is not just one way to build continuity. In fact, there's a ton of different ways and depending on how involved your illustrations can be, you may not need to even do as much. Uh, even sometimes I think setting a color palette alone is enough to bring a whole bunch of illustrations together and live in the same family. But for those of you that are thinking about that and maybe giving that some thought when you're doing your work, like I used to in the past, um, these were just some of the things that were going through my head today. And I think uh, kind of lend themselves well to the idea of the Art Snacks Challenge because you are already going to limit yourself with supplies. So that in itself sets your color palette and it sets your textures and it sets your, um, you know, you set your supplies. So there's really not much you can do beyond that. So this is actually a really good way to learn about continuity in your work, if that's something you're thinking of. It's not something I always think of, but I think it came together really well today, and I was happy to have a set of fashion illustrations. Fashion being uh, an industry when you're making collections or uh, you know designing costumes for a Cruella movie, uh, that being a place where continuity and this idea of cohesiveness is really important. So I think it pulled together really well today. Hopefully that's something that you can spend some time thinking about as you're completing your challenge. Here are the trio of Cruella-ish inspired fashion illustrations. Very happy to return to my fashion illustration roots today. I hope you enjoyed that video. Let us know how you get on and don't forget to share your work with us. It is always such a pleasure to see what you come up with. I would even love to see if you've got some Cruella inspired fashion ladies to share. I would love to see it. See you in a second. There we go, all finished. This is my trio of Cruella inspired fashion illustrations. I hope you enjoyed that. If you are thinking of subscribing to Art Snacks, you can use the code JAMES10 at checkout for 10% off. And don't forget to share your work with us using the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge in the Mix community and also on social media. Until next month, bye.